Okay, good morning. At this point, you should take a chumash and open up to Perik Havchei. Make sure you have a chumash Vaikra, which is on the table near the door. You should also have a handout from your teacher, your substitute teacher, it's page number two. And you should open up to Perik Havchei, Pasuk Bet. We're going to do this together. It's uh, beneficial for you to look inside as I read and translate, so you get practice and learn how to do it as well. So Pasuk Bet, we're going to translate each part of the Pasuk as we go along. The Pasuk says, Daber el Bene Israel, the Amarta Aleihem. First line is, Daber, speak to the Bene Israel, the Amarta Aleihem, and say unto them. First part of the Pasuk. Second line, Kitavo el Aretz, when you come into the land, Third line, Asher ani noten lachem, that I am giving to you, to them, I'm sorry, to them. Veshavta aaretz, and the land will rest. Shavta is from the word Shabbat, the land will rest. And finally, Shabbat lachem, a Shabbat for Hashem. If you have any questions on this pasuk, take a moment to write it down. Hopefully you do. Continue on Rashi. If you look at Rashi on pasuk Bet, the Dibura Matchel is Shabbat Lashem. The translation of the Dibura Matchel, as we just saw, is a Shabbat for Hashem. So you might have guessed that the question that he is troubled by is, what, is that, what does that mean, that it's a Shabbat for Hashem? And Rashi says, look inside the Rashi, please. Keshem is Leshem Hashem, for the sake of Hashem. Keshem Shenemar be Shabbat Bereshit. Just like it says about Shabbat in the Ten Commandments when the Torah talks about the midst of Shabbat, it says that Sheshet Yamim Tase Melacha, six days you may do work, Ubayom Ashevi'i, but the seventh day is Shabbat Lashem, it's a Shabbat for Hashem. So there we have the same language, and Rashi is making a comparison that just like the Shabbat of the week, the Saturday, is dedicated for Hashem, so to this year that we're learning about, the seventh year is also a Shabbat to Hashem. It's not a Saturday, but it's a year that is dedicated to Hashem, Leshem Hashem, that's what it means. Okay, maybe later on uh, we'll see deeper what that means. Okay, in the next Psukim, from Gimel through Zayin, the Torah describes the mitzvah of Shemitah. We're not going to translate word for word, but just to get the gist of what the Psukim are saying. So first it says, in Pasuk Gimel, She shanim tizra sadecha, that six years you may plant your field. The she shanim tizmor karmecha, and you may prune your vineyard. Okay, so vineyard is the place where the grapes grow, and to prune means to cut the dead branches, the branches that uh, harm a tree. So you may do that, meaning that you can take care of your vineyard. And also, the asavta et vuata. And continuing in number one, you can also gather your produce. So you harvest, and you take the produce that you harvest, and you take some for yourself if you want, and you sell some of it if you want, if that's your business. Next pasuk. But continues the Torah and Pasuk Dalit, Bashana Shevit, but on the seventh day, on the seventh year, Shabbat Shabbaton Yela Aritz. It should be a Shabbat for the land, meaning that you stop. And what is it what does it do? Now the Torah gives us in detail what laws apply to the Shemitah. So Sadecha Lotizra, number one. You may not plant your field. That means that you cannot go ahead and put seeds into the ground. N number two, the karmecha lo tizmor. You may not prune your vineyard, which again is cutting off the dead branches of a tree. You cannot do that during the seventh year. Next pasuk. It's a fiach ketzircha lo tixor. So you can... Harvest just for you to harvest just for yourself the aftergrowth, meaning 
when a person um, harvests the field, there's going to be some of the seeds that go that drop and go back into the ground, and they're going to grow by themselves. That's called aftergrowth, meaning you didn't purposely plant it, but seeds do fall every once in a while, and plants just grow by themselves. This is called sfiach. This is the aftergrowth. So if stuff grows by itself in the seventh year, you didn't plant it, it grew by itself, then you cannot harvest it just for yourself. That which grew by itself cannot be harvested just for you. So yes, you can pick stuff for yourself, but not in the regular way for business and so on. So if something grows by itself, you that's called the aftergrowth. You can pick some for yourself, but you cannot uh, market it. You cannot just keep everybody away from it. Number four. Also, it tells us the in ve nezirecha lotiv. So you, you, the, the harvest you cannot of the grapes cannot be kept just by yourself. Again, you you can eat obviously from what grows, but you cannot hoard it. You cannot just keep it all to yourself. The next pasuk tells us that the aita shabbat aris. This rest of the land will be for you leachla, which means that you may eat. Obviously, you can eat that which grows. And also, you may feed your servants, then also your workers, and also your animals. Okay, so that's what the Pasuk tells us about the do's and the don'ts of the Shemitah year, the seventh year. So the basic idea is as follows, that on the seventh year, if you own land, you farm, and things grow, so you may not act as if you are the owner. You, can, you are equal to everybody else. You can enjoy what grows, meaning you can eat it and support your family, but you cannot do business with it. It's not exclusively yours. So if somebody else wants to come into the field and partake from that which grows, they're welcome to it. You cannot keep them out. Now, interestingly enough, later on in the Torah, in the book of the Varim, we're going to learn that besides the agricultural laws that apply to the seventh year that we just learned, there's another aspect of that, and that is that on the seventh year, all debts are canceled. Right? So if I owe you money, I got to pay you within the first six years of that debt. But on the seventh year, on the Shemitah year, all debts are canceled. You might be aware that, in, uh, that politicians are talking about this a lot now, especially when it comes to student debt, that they want debt forgiveness. And we'll talk more about that in class. Okay, with the time that you have uh, remaining, you may want to take a little bit of take a few minutes to yourself to review for Friday's formative, which is a skills test. You each have received a study guide, and you're welcome to use the um, skills sheet that is found on class pages in Tanakh. So and use it well.